All right then, let's look at the class of organic chemicals called the alkynes, and the functional group is the alkynal. The IB are getting fussy now that you understand the class is that and the functional group is that. Last, uh, last syllabus, no one cared, but this time they do. Every alkyne must have this alkynal functional group, which is two carbons with a triple bond in it. So there can't be any methine because meth implies one carbon and the minimum you need is two. So the first alkyne is ethyne and you need to know up to six carbons. So that's ethyne, two carbons popped on the hydrogens to make sure that every carbon now has four bonds. Moving on to propyne, well you might think maybe I need a number there, perhaps calling it one propyne, but you know what, it's, uh, it's unambiguous. There is no two propyne. Let me draw it out and show you what's the same. So this would be two propyne, the double bonds between the second and the third. No, 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 Th these are the same. This and that are just rotated are just rotated versions of the same molecule. So since it's unambiguous, you can just call it propyne. So four carbons uh, implies bute, and ein is their functional group there. Now again, we're going to have a bit of a problem. This would be one butyne, this would be two butyne, and this would be three butyne. But no, that one's a repetition. The first and the third are just rotations of each other. So since I want to get the lowest number in my name, I'm going to erase that. A common problem is that you get over-enthusiastic and you add more hydrogens than are actually needed. Every carbon has got to have four bonds. Alrighty, so this one was one butyne. And this one was 2-butyne. Now the skeletal structures are a little trickier than you'd think because this is a straight molecule. And in fact, whatever sticks onto this end and that end is also going to be linear. It's going to be straight. And the reason is, is because the carbon has two charge centers. Each carbon has two charge centers. So these electrons there and those electrons there are going to be on opposite sides of the atom. So be a little careful when you're doing the skeletal structures. This is ethyne, propyne. There's one, two, three carbons there. So try and keep it straight. Uh, one butyne. Is like that. So one, two, three, four carbons. This is straight. This is locked into a straight line with these other two. And for two butyne. Now that just feels weird drawing it like that, but indeed that's the, the proper skeletal structure. The skeletal tr structure should, should try to imitate the shape. There's one, two, three, four carbons. And we have enough information now to try to work out the general formula. And so that's CnH2n minus two. Now you're expected to know the one with five carbons and the one with six carbons. So how many linear five carbon alkynes are there? Are there just one like ethene or are there more than one like butene? Answers in the notes below. And what about hexine? How many different isomers of linear alkyne hexine are there? Again, answers in the notes. So what about if the alkynes are branched? How would you go about naming that? So even to my eye, this looks weird. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons in the longest row. So it's going to have to be uh, one, two, three, four, five. 
between the second and the third, counting from the left, there's a triple bond. And one, two, three, four. And on the fourth carbon, there appears to be a methyl group. So let me draw in the hydrogens. So how would I name it? Well, you've got to lock yourself down uh, to the numbering system that gives the triple bond the lowest number. So one, two, three, it's between the two and the three, so it's going to have to be two pentine, because the longest chain is five, that's pent, and ion is the triple bond. So it's going to be two pentine, but you've still got to tell me about this methyl group. And the methyl group is one, two, three, is on the fourth one. So it's four methyl. And don't forget, commas between the numbers, but dashes between the numbers and the words. So there doesn't seem to be much chemistry you need to know for the alkynes. Uh, we can look at combustion. Uh, Ethine and oxygen, there are three possible reactions, one of them producing carbon dioxide and water, carbon monoxide if there's less oxygen available, and finally just carbon, that's really soot and water. And so that depends on how much oxygen there is. Balancing these out, if this is... So two and a half oxygen there, Less oxygen, if there's only one and a half oxygen, you're going to get the monoxide. And if there's only half an oxygen, you're going to get the soot. So more oxygen gives more complete combustion. Members of the alkynes tend to burn with a smoky flame in air because they have a high carbon to hydrogen ratio. There's not enough oxygen in the air to completely burn that carbon heavy compound. Ethine, also known as acetylene, is used in welding torches, but notice here that there is no smoke when the ethine is being burned, and that's because another cylinder of oxygen is used to ensure complete oxidation. So hot is the flame that you can use it to melt metal, either to join metal or to break metal apart. Alkynes are unsaturated. In organic chemistry, this means that there's a carbon-carbon double or carbon-carbon triple bond. In this case, it's the triple bond.